So great. Maybe we can just, uh, I just wanted to start today um, sharing a lovely presentation that uh, Micaela and Agustina did for today. That is the, the summer camp. And we're starting to talk about the summer camp again. Yeah, uh, for us, it's still winter and I have a flu, so <laughs> don't worry. I, I know you're in winter and uh, summer right now, but believe me, um, uh, you will miss uh, summer again. And so that's why we created summer camp for you. So again, uh, we come from Uruguay. We are here uh, over there, as Omero says, it, it's a very, uh, old joke from The Simpsons that we love to share with everyone, Omero fighting Uruguay near Brazil and Argentina. And yeah, we are the guys who also do the Montevideo Tech Meetups and the Mud Talks. And we created this event, the Summer Camp, you know, uh, it's an annual event. Uh, this will be the third year? Yes, the third year, yeah, great, woo -hoo. So the idea is, come here on your winter, so our summer, and be here with us uh, for a week so we can uh, collaborate together, create some open source project, and of course have you know a lot of visits and stuff to do here in Montevideo that you will love. And I know people like Alex Zambelli or Barry or Babesh here, they will uh, probably say good things about the, the, the experience. So if you want to know more about what it's the cultural experience just talk to them and i want to share with you a, a small video that we have this year Impressive. I love this video. It's very, very cool. <laughs> Thank you, Agustina, for all this. Oh. oh, next presentation here. So this year, we're going to have Montevideo Summer Camp on uh, 26th of January up to 1st of February. It's just one week over here in Montevideo that you can came here and spend time with us in our offices at Qualabs be rounded with people, talk about video a lot, and discover amazing places here in Uruguay. And of course, we are going to have summer projects again. So the idea for the for summer projects is, again, to create some, uh, spend three months doing some projects, contribute to the community, and uh, work on this together. You don't need to be in Montevideo to do this. We do it online. Uh, last year, we contributed on two projects, the CMAP HAM and the Common Mayor Library project that were amazing. And we are fine, uh, now we are looking for ideas. So if you have an open source project or an idea, a proof of concept or whatever you want to do, it could be related to Dash, for example, Dash and CNCD that we are going to talk today, or it could be related to C2PA or any other idea, it's just, I don't know, write to me on Slack, video dev, on LinkedIn, email, whatever, or here, just put your hand up. I will ping you later. And well, the idea now is to find some great ideas and and see what we can achieve together. And if you want to know more, just go to our website. You can uh, write to us or, oh, I can, we can put on the chat the, 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 the website. Right, Agustina? So everyone, if you want to just take a look, learn more, just go there. Uh, thank you for this advertising time. <laughs> you know, uh, we have to do the, the, the part of the of the ads. Uh. <laughs> so again, uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, today we have two great talks from no. David from ECDRM and also from Tomas from Qualabs. 
And um, David, I think we can start uh, with you. I don't know if you are okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. I will kick it off. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Go, go into presentation mode. Entire screen. There. Think. All right. So am I sharing is the question. Perfect. Perfect. All right, everyone. So yes, I'm David Eisenbacher. I'm CEO and co-founder of EasyDRM. We're based out of New York. And I'm going to talk about C2PA for video. So it's going to be kind of a hybrid talk of not entirely how C2PA is uh, for all that provenance and everything else, but we're going to be specific around uh, the, uh, the aspects of C2PA a little bit and then how that ties into video, uh, especially around MPEG Dash and uh, HLS. So we will first start with a little bit about what C2PA is. It's Providence. It's really not saying that this video is uh, is is accurate. It's about saying, hey, you know, this video, let's say it's off a news network, is coming from this news network. You know where it's coming from. You know who took it. You know if it was edited by them uh, for size or color correction, you know, when it was published. So it's really the chain of custody from capture through the whole media pipeline to playback. So uh, I'm a C2PA, uh, you know, works on video, works on images, uh, 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 documents, PDFs. But really, it's not saying that, you know, what you're seeing is accurate because you can't do that with, you know, content. But it's really showing you where it came from. So therefore, if I trust, let's say, CNN, and this is being posted by CNN, with province data, then I know it, it hasn't been altered. So um, this is the whole idea about C2PA is about showing that that province through capture all the way to actually viewing it, um, not so much that the content itself is accurate. So it is based off a cryptographic trust model. Um, it has uh, a original manifest and a manifest is basically it's a, it's a digitally signed claim. Uh, those claims would have assertions and uh, other metadata, like if it came from a phone or a camera, um, you know, if it was a professional camera like a Nokia, I'm sorry, um, or a Canon, uh, or if it came from a Samsung phone, if it was done, uh, modified, and let's say, uh, uh, Adobe Photoshop for color correction or cropping, and then where it was actually then posted. So uh, all those bits and pieces, you know, you, you basically have the original claim, and then in, and then you can keep adding on to that in that food chain by adding assertions. Assertions can have ingredients of like what components were used, what, what applications were used, but allows you to see that 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 process because even if it is off a news site. It's still going to be modified by some photo editor to make sure it's the right size for the web page or it's the right color uh, a balance. So there will always be a modification or an edit, even to an image, um, even if it is a like user generated. But it shows you who did it, when, where, and why. Let's go next page. So the trust model. Uh, so there is hard bonding, and the, and the the hard bonding is really what we're using. For you know, for video, soft bindings, uh, you know, was more designed for around images and, and basically other things where where it's very easy to remove this. But there's a hard binding. It's based off a uh, XO59 certificate. Um, there's going to be kind of two levels of certificates. So uh, so the C2PA is now in version 2.x, as to say, uh, that's being published. There is going to be a a user or a corporation or a person individual, uh, you know, a certificate and it's going to be kind of a machine certificate. So a phone is a, a machine or uh, or a device uh, that would have a, a certificate, and and myself, I would have my own that I would use inside of a uh, editing software. And all those have trust lists. All those uh, are independent trust lists. There's not like a master CA out there, like a, a DigiCert or that kind of stuff. They are developing these things. Um, 
but uh, but trustless can be independent of uh, other trustless. So diving into the actual video side. So in you know in doing a validation on a player, uh, you know basically our content comes from the media server where you know we are you know we, you know, we read a manifest right we you know we call fragments um uh mpeg dash or hls uses either you know a fragment before file but basically basically th those fragment before files would be signed so this is where we get the split part of it so normally you have the media server fragment goes into a buffer and goes to playback and this is a parallel process. When a fragment is loaded, it would then be processed by a C2PA engine. This engine would then actually do a validation against uh, the actual root, uh, sorry, uh, against the root manifest, and then any other manifests that are bound to it, any ingredients, any uh, assertions, and that, and that hierarchy can go back uh, I mean, it's based several layers. So in that CPU engine, it would actually do a validation. And then that validation metadata is what a player can also then show and render in, uh, you know, in the UI. It can show who signed it. It can show when it was signed. It can show the actual data around this um, that's independent of the actual uh, boot, uh, uh, media chain that we're used to of, um, a video being rendered. So, so when we take this hierarchy and then we actually focus more into video, we you know, we all know that in video we have segments. Segments have certain sizes. Inside of a segment, you can have fragments and then chunks, right? So we can get you know pretty granular of how small these little bits and pieces can be. And this is all based off the open standard around MPEG. So it's an ISO box container. Uh, you, you may be familiar with, with, with MOOFs and the MDATs, um, uh, that is part of a normal, uh, fragment MP4 file, um, that, uh, that's being loaded, but I'm showing this, uh, as, you know, just to let you know that in this hierarchy, the chunks go up to the fragments, the fragments go up to the segments, segments, uh, are, are listed out in, uh, in, 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 a, in a time value. But these are all part of the uh, processing that you need to think about when you talk about signing. So when we go into the signing process, we take a chunk, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then in the init segment, we can actually then do our hashing. Our hashing will happen across uh, the actual now in in VOD as opposed to live. They're, you know, they're, you know, this is where they kind of, uh, you know, they will actually diverge in the way that they actually use processing. But let's say in VOD, you actually know the entire size of that VOD file. You may have a, a stack MP4 file uh, prior to being packaged into HLS or MPEG dash, and, and that and that initial size, that initial hash, can be part of your top hash, kind of your root, right? So then, when you actually use tools. Have a BEMPEG and others to actually fragment that into a, uh, a HLS or, or, or a MPEG dash stream. Um, we, you know, we will look into that, and our hashes go top down. So we have a top hash that was, you know, basically the uh, initial manifest was created from. It may be based off the entire original MP4, and then these sub hashes are then the segments uh, and then the chunks. So we actually kind of bind these together. So that we can understand that if something in the middle of the Merkle tree is incorrect, then that will invalidate that entire uh, 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 of a component. So the player itself, uh, the um, actual way to view this is the player still is doing the you know the rendering, and this is outside of the rendering of the video. So the video is going to render regardless, but a player UI can then show uh, the fact that. Uh, there is these signed segments, these fragments, and, and, and the corresponding relationship, uh, you know, that, that, that's between them. Um, it, and it can be done at um, a level to where even before it's packaged into mpeg hls the original MP4 itself has, um, has a manifest, 
And then that manifests by uh, a provenance engine can then be referenced. And then these sub-segments can be signed independently of that following uh, the uh, basically a uh, base hash off of each other. Oops. So what we're doing on, uh, you know, basically uh, at EZRM, what we're trying to play around with and what we have playing around with in the lab is we're basically taking the source of a video. Um, this is the camera, but again, it could be a stack file. And we're creating um, the original CTPA manifest. And we're basically assigning a hash to that. And we're storing that hash in our, uh, uh, in our province generator. But really, that's you know just the first level. And then if it's then edited inside of software for color correction, or you're adding tracks, or you're trimming it, all those ingredients then add into this. So therefore, at each level, that uh, basically uh, each level gets signed. So it's signed by XYZ camera. It's signed by a person uh, for XYZ editor. And that editor could just say CNN, you know, video editor or something like that. And then it, and then at that point in time, it can be processed by an origin or a packager. So it's going from a static file into what we're, you know, you know, we're very used to in, in streaming where they're fragment MP4 files. And those ingredients get added and the hash pattern is created. So it allows you to then see all the previous steps, if it was done by a person or done by a machine, and a player itself can actually then show this on a, a sidebar. So this is not affecting the actual playback, but allows you to see where it was taken, who edited it, and basically the uh, the the processes that's gone through. Uh, there actually is a public website um, that it, that will actually will show this if you go uh, this uh, this link later on, uh, and, and you actually play this back. So this actually uh, this actually was made by a CTPA uh, organization to show you uh, content playing. It has a little UI, and it will actually then show you uh, if if it's uh, validated or non-validated. Um, uh, in the bottom one, it basically they have that they have segments that don't have the proper hashes, and therefore it shows red in the UI. The actual UI display is actually up to the content owner, so it could be you know just red bars at the bottom. It could be a giant X to the window. It could be however um, that uh, the the actual author and the actual uh, owner of that content actually wants to display back that content of of saying this is original and or not. So I was going to ask if there's any questions about what we've or you know what I've actually kind of shown. Great, right, thank, thank you. you. Any questions? Any questions? Just, just with your, your unmute and sure. sure. Uh, uh, so oh, David. David. There is a correct. Do you see a use case for this uh, leveraging something like blockchain ledger technology? So, 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 based blockchain uh, uh, companies are very active in the CTPA organization, and I would say that you know anyone watching this should actually join CTPA. Uh, but yes, yeah, so keeping this province data, these hashes could be stored in a blockchain uh, uh, you know, system for ledgering. Uh, the actual ledger itself is not it def uh, is not what CTPA is trying to define. It's not saying it has to be stored this way, but yes. So therefore, a blockchain system could actually be used to store uh, the actual ledgers. Thank you. And hello. So I have a question for you. Uh, I understand that there that the. the provenance server or where you store all the hashes and stuff it's very important so um what what's what's the idea behind that it's like are we going to have at the end some uh, as we have with, H, with certificates in https some you know authorities over there to register stuff it's going to be something i deploy for my company how that works or what's the idea behind that so the answer is yes to all of that. So uh, a large organization. So so basically, uh, so I didn't cover CTPAs uh, uh, a lot, but Facebook is a member, Adobe is a member, Microsoft's a members, uh, a members. So 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 basically, it could be that 
Facebook themselves creates their own certificates. They have their own ledger system. They have their own trust lists. Um, uh, you know, and then they're going to be other companies who just want to buy a service. Uh, you know what 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 you know what you know, uh, what, you know, what we're developing ourselves is kind of that service, uh, a API structure for you know for people who actually don't want to build everything themselves, but want to be able to use um, uh, a, you know, CTPA to actually sign their content and, and be able to offer uh, that you know that uh, you know that kind of seal of approval um, uh, of their content. Um, for generating certificates to have that trust list and, and to have that history of ingredients as well as uh, the, uh, the 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 basically that whole ledger of chaining. So yes, uh, you know we're making our own, and our own is going to be something that's going to be kind of exposed like an API that uh, uh, other companies can use. And yes, if you want to build everything, you know basically uh, you know build everything yourself, you can um, C2PA is um open meaning that it is uh open source it, it is published out there that almost everyone can actually uh, head to the GitHub site see how uh the extra spec uh, works on uh, the tool set um a lot of these documents are uh, public on c2pa um the reason of joining the c2pa itself is to help to contribute to the standards so it's kind of a uh there, you know there's an old uh old movie called fight club and that you don't talk about Fight Club is like the first rule. So it's basically everything I'm kind of showing you here is all is a public side of C2PA. Uh, there is meetings about video and uh, and a lot of the standards that are being developed for 2.x going forward and in the future, and, and uh, all that is for members. So we, you know, therefore I encourage you to join. But if all you want to just do is actually implement this and do this. Then that's all public. That uh, that uh, that's all open source um, uh, under a Linux agreement. That's great. And how about um, player implementation right now? Or uh, I don't know. Uh, is there anything ready for anyone who, for example, wants to try it out or create something by itself? Sure. So uh, so basically, this demo website that was created was actually a fork of the dash.js uh, 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 player uh, that's also on the GitHub site. Uh, there's not a lot of, I'm going to call it, there's no commercial player yet that has this just built into it, uh, but there, uh, but there's a fork that exists that they use to show you how these pieces work. So if you want to use that as your reference and then build your own modules for Shaka player or video.js and or your own homego player, uh, th th that's there. But there's no player right now that just has this as um, a default feature. That could be a summer project. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might be good for the common media player or you know, you know, uh, and a common media framework that is being worked on, uh, just so that it's uh, uh, just a library to be used by any player. Yeah. Any other question for David? Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Right, well, that was great. Now we have to change topic and let's go to Dash. Dash and MPDs with CMCD. So for the next talk, Tomas is going to take the microphone. I'll tell us about some new stuff in the Dash standard, right? Exactly, exactly. Let me just share my screen here. And are you good there? Can you see guys in your screen? Perfect. Awesome. OK, so thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, my name is Tomas Arrivillaga, and I'm a delivery manager at Qualabs. And today I wanted to share with you some of the work that we have been doing in Qualabs regarding CMCD, and especially CMCD session initialization through the Dash MPD. So the agenda for today is this. We'll be going through a bit of a CMCD refresher, then covering why you should use this feature, some use cases for it, the implementation we did, and finally, a wrap up of the presentation. OK, so let's get started with the CMCD refresher. And honestly, I can't start a CMCD refresher without pointing you guys towards Will Law Amazing CMCD talk 
called Clever Monkeys Communicating Discreetly. If you want to do a deep dive into the standard, some applications and studies, I urge you guys to check it out. I'll be using some slides for this refresher, since I believe it really encapsulates what we need to know for the rest of the presentation. So let's talk about what TMCD is. First, it means common media client data. It's a defined set of structured key value pairs that communicate mutually beneficial media-related information from the player to the CDN. The player can send this information in three ways, either through a set of custom headers, query arguments, or a JSON object. And finally, it's called common because the, the same data structure can be used across all players and all CDNs. So these are some of the key value pairs that you'll encounter in CMCD. So you got encoded bitrate, you got content ID to identify the content you're watching, you got session ID to identify the playback session, and a lot of other keys with valuable information for the CDN, such as buffer starvation, playback rate, top bit rate. There's a lot of stuff you can communicate here. As we mentioned, CMCD defines three ways of sending the data, and this is how they look like. You got custom headers, you got query arguments, and JSON, and this is how they would look like. And this is how it would look uh, if we use CMCD through the query params. The get request gets the CMCD data appended as a query argument. And CMCD is supported by all major players, such as Dash.js, BDJS, Shaka player, X player, AB player, a ton of them. This is how you can currently configure your Dash.js player to send CMCD data. As you can see, you just need to add a, a setting to the player enabling CMCD. You got to set some keys, such as the session ID and content ID. You got to set the node in which you want to send the data. And finally, enable the keys you just want to send. So finishing the refresher, I urge you again to go check out Will's law presentation. It was actually my first involvement in CMCD when he shared the talk in a Montevideo tech summer camp. I believe it was two years ago. And I use it as a constant resource. I left the QR code here if you want to go and check it out. But I'll be posting the link after the meeting in the chat as well. So with the refresher out of the way, let's imagine the following situation, which is actually really common. A lot of companies have this structure where you have a video workflow team that takes care of the transcoding, the packaging, and getting the content to an origin. Then you got another CDN team that handles the distribution. Then you got one or multiple teams handling the apps and players where the users are going to be watching the content. You got iOS, Android, TV, setup boxes, for example. And then you've got a backend where you got more information for the app itself. So let's say you would want to implement CMCD uh, using the way we described before for this team distribution because the CDN team wants to optimize delivery. And that's where you face a challenge. So the CDN team needs to get all the teams in sync on how to configure each player's CMCD session. And once they're done, you need to do the same exercise for each modification. Also, the configuration could become rigid for the player. So changing the data to be sent is going to involve several deployments across the, all the player teams. So doing stuff like just have a set percentage of players send CMCD data, only have certain devices send CMCD, add or remove CMCD keys from the session, and send data only to one CDN, becomes a big collaboration effort only when the CDN teams wants to get something done. So MPEG dash answer to this problem comes with the dash six edition, where it gives control of the CMCD data to the ones that actually need it. So basically, basically, the content delivery teams have control of the CMCD data through the MPD. And the way that they do this is by uh, the new elements in the MPD, namely one called CMCD parameters. Uh, today, I'm not actually going to dive into the intricacies of the new elements. If you'd like to know them, I highly encourage you to dive into the standard and take a look at it for yourself. What we're going to do today shows some use cases that these new elements actually provide, along with the uh, MPDs to achieve them. So let's start with a really simple one, uh, basic CMCD configuration. As you can see, this is the same configuration you would use in your JavaScript player. But now it's coming from the MPD, effectively giving the CDN team power to configure the CMCD data you want to send. One big thing this actually allows is for the CDN team to set the content ID. So previously, the player would need to fetch the content ID either from another API. Now it comes from the MPD itself. 
you can also set the session ID through the MPD, although it's not necessary since if it's not provided, the player would set some itself. So moving on to our next case, the new CMCD parameter element allows the MPD to configure in which type of request we want to add the CMCD data. This is supported through the include in request attribute. You can configure it to send CMCD data when fetching MPDs or segments. In another case, for example, let's say you have a multi-period MPD. You can also configure the CMCD data to be sent per period. So the new CMCD uh, parameters element is not only for MPD level, but it's also on period level. And this is further configurable by having the period setting override the MPD level setting. So you could easily have a default set of parameters be sent in your period, but specify a particular CMCD behavior for a specific period. Now let's take a pause here before continuing on to the next use cases and refresh a bit on what content steering is. So content steering is a standard that allows the player to switch between CDNs to use for fetching their content. The way this works, and I'm really oversimplifying this, is that basically the player queries a content steering server with some data, and the server replies back with a CDN to use. And this feature is available in both Dash and HLS. So back to the use cases. The CMCD parameters tag also allows you to specify which CDN you'd like to send the CMCD data to. This is done through the service location attribute. It's the full values to send CDN to all CDNs. In this case, it's to specify that we only want to send CMCD data to CDN A and CDN B, but not CDN C. The other way around is also supported. You can specify specific data to send to each CDN rather than just leaving out a CDN out. This is helpful when you bring a new CDN to your workflow and want to have a deeper monitoring through its initial phases. And one final use case I want to share with you is sending the CMCD data to the content steering server. All the time we've been talking about sending CMCD data has been between the player and the CDN when the player requests something from it. But with this new functionality, you can actually aggregate the CMCD data to the content steering server requests to allow the content steering server to make better decisions with this data. You can enable this by adding steering to the including request attribute. All of the previous use cases are supported in implementation within in collaboration with Comcast Alex Gladi for Dash JS. These features will be available in Dash JS 5.0 release. But if you want to check out the functionality, you can go ahead and check the PR. It's in the Dash repo, and I will be leaving a link after the presentation in the chat as well. To control this feature, we added a new flag called apply parameters from MPD. It's true by default, so the player will implement the CMCD parameters that come with the MPD by default. And if no parameters are set in the MPD, then the player will just use its own CMCD parameters. So reaching the, the final here of the presentation, wrapping up, the key takeaways for these presentations are MPEG-6 edition adds CMCD parameter as a new MPD element. The delivery team now has control of how to use CMCD through the MPD. You can customize CMCD settings per CDN, period, or request type. You can also send CMCD to the content stream server for, for better decision making. And all of this is available by default in the Dash JS 5.0 release. And with that, I want to thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And I think it's time for questions, if there are any. Excellent. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, I think, um, is there any uh, test content, the content to try, to out, try this? out this? Uh, there, uh, is. there is. Um, um, I can uh, actually, I can actually share, share uh, 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 I, There's a bit there's of a bit effect over there. there but... Okay. Um, um, I, 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 we do have oh, a repo with, we, okay. Thank that, I think there's a we do have a repo with uh, content to test. The PR has it as well, but I can share the link in the in the, in the chat as well. Let me just Thank share you. the links I mentioned first. Yeah. David. Hey, hey so I have a question. Um, if the values are set in the manifest and, 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 and there's competing values in the player, who wins? Right now, it depends on the, the on the, on the configuration you have for the player, by default, it's going to take in the one in the MPD. If the MPD does not have 
parameters is going to take the, the ones in the session. But that's modified levels as well. You can just define, hey, I just want my session to be the one that I set in my player, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Great. Any other question? Great. Thank you, Thomas. I think we're good. Yeah, okay. I love this. Thanks, I think it's a, a great improvement for you know the ecosystem of players and how to do stuff. Um, I would love to see this on the common mail library. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's something to add in the future. Great. Well, thank you everyone to for being here today. Uh, and thank you again, David and Tomas for your presentations. And we are finishing 20 minutes earlier from what we expected, but that's fine. It's the content, not the time. <laughs> so thank you everyone for being here. Uh, and I hope to see you in two months in the next meetup. See you. Thank, thank you, David. Excellent presentation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.